the footage like swipes away as if someone has swiped to the next short and I place a block of obsidian and then use a piston to like push the short back down and I'm like hey where are you going like nice. <laughs> you're not going anywhere <laughs> and oh. I, I just think that's like a super stupid idea and super fun and then and then I start to I'm I'm like okay well what were you about to watch then I hop on a flying machine and like go down through their feed of just other the, the sort of live YouTube shorts which are <laughs> <laughs> not really live and slightly awkward to watch and i kind of go past those and <laughs> that's awesome that's, that's awesome. really yeah. stupid it's a super stupid idea it's so stupid but i think <laughs> given that i fully committed to it and like the editing is actually quite good on it and and it all flows quite nicely it ends up being <laughs> ends up being enjoyable it ends up being fun welcome back to the show there's no telling where we'll go so come and share a laugh on the Imp and Skiz podcast. So here we are in this position again. This means one thing. Yeah, every time they see us back on the couch, they can pretty much know right away. That we got a guest coming. <laughs> we do have a guest, and, yeah. And, and now some, so a lot of you know who the guest is because you saw the thumbnail, but somebody stumbled upon this part. They have no idea who it is. Impulse, we got Mumbo. We Mumbo in this the house. Me. I feel like you should Hello. insert a little like applause sound effect over I could. top of that. <laughs> okay, right. I will. Yeah, Done. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We'll just give <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy to have an applause behind my name. That's cool. Oh man, it is good. Yeah, to, no, it's good to be to, here. No, it's good to have you. I mean, this kind of started, and and I, I spilled this kind of conversation to uh, some of our, our private supporters, but uh, the, you and I were just kind of goofing around as we were placing dirt on Doc's over Doc's perimeter about you possibly mm -hmm. being on the podcast. Do you want to tell him what you what mm -hmm. you said? I can see now that you didn't go through with it, but you had an idea of what you might show up I, I looking can't... like on the podcast. Do you remember? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've just remembered what you're talking about. Yeah, I said that I was going to turn up with with like a fully dyed mustache and like in a suit. Was... That, was, that, that was my promise. And I feel like I've totally failed oh, it. Oh, we can all imagine oh, it. Man. We can all imagine it. Momo showing up in his yeah. own cosplay, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just means you have to invite me back. Yeah. Like I'm already, already going to put in for a next there, part. There you go. Yeah. Next time, next time. I was, I was curious if we were going to go yeah. through with it. I didn't expect it, though. Anyway, so uh, what we like to do is when we have guests, we don't always assume that they know uh, everyone that we're, we're hanging out with. And so if you could, just for our audience, let them know what you're, what you're about, who you are, and, and uh, how you got to where you there's, are today. There's probably about a good four to five, maybe six people in the world who don't right? know. Right, exactly. For those <laughs> five people left in the world that have yeah. never heard of Mumbo Jumbo, uh, please, please let them know who, who you are. Um, yeah, so I, I'm I'm Mumbo, uh, also known as Ollie, I guess, or I'm Ollie, also known as Mumbo. I guess that's the way around uh -huh. that it that it goes. Um, and yeah, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a member of the Hermitcraft server, and I also make kind of redstone contraptions and industrial Minecraft builds. And yeah, uh, press shift with my thumb, I guess, is like that. That seems Every to be the line of <laughs> things that people know me for. <laughs> yeah, if you if you if you Wikipedia Mumbo, oh dude, it, it, yeah. like one of the first lines is known to press shift with his thumb. Yeah, <laughs> All right. And so everybody's always curious how you managed to pull that off. But uh, let, let, let's you know we we got a lot to talk about, but let's just dive into that one piece because I still can't get. But that, <laughs> that's actually a question from from one of our viewers. That, mm -hmm. What? How? And why? What is that? <laughs> I, honestly, I can't. I, I I don't know where it stemmed from. I don't know what what caused it to be. Um, it just felt like the most natural way for me to do it. Like I just fold my thumb underneath <laughs> my fingers. Like, yeah, hang on, I've got I've got my keyboard here. I guess I could probably. Oh, we're I don't even know how I'm going to do this. Like, it's kind of like I just. Like this. <laughs> The most unnatural I mean, way. This is this is extra awkward to be honest with you. Doing it behind my head as well. But but yeah, it just goes it goes behind my head. It goes behind behind my hand. That's and just amazing. That seems to be. I guess you can't the most really, natural way for me to do it. You can't really question it until you try it yourself, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, you know, I have small I have small hands. I don't think it's going to work out for me. I have huge hands, and I tried it, and I'm like, ah, it's just, it's awful. No, it does feel all kinds of wrong. And what's funny is is that like. I press shift with my pinky when I'm pressing space. So like it's clearly in my brain to press shift with my pinky. <laughs> like it, it it knows that it can do it, but then just whenever I'm not pressing space and shift at the same time, it's straight away the thumbs in there. Um <laughs> That's, yeah, amazing. I can't That's amazing. That's okay. We get we we always get a lot of crap about inverting our mouse. Yeah, we invert so. we invert the y axis. Wait, you yeah. invert your 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you're going to be coming to me talking about <laughs> residue with your thumb. I thought. When you're inverting your mouth. I thought we were normal. Right. So we ran a poll out there and it was, we're, we're part of like 3% of people yeah. or whatever it is. I was really yeah. shocked. I, I don't know how people, <laughs> no, I cannot play if I don't invert yeah. it. Yeah. It's so we, confusing though. <laughs> we got used to, um, used to fly a helicopter in a game called Battlefield 2. And in a helicopter, right. you kind of pull back on the throttle to make the nose of it go mm -hmm. up, right? And so I got used to pulling back on the mouse to look up, and then there, that's it. That's right. it, yeah. That's been it ever since, so... Yeah, we always get <laughs> that kind of makes sense. Yeah. It does make sense. It doesn't mean I'm not going to blast you for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Have no, you seen how welcome. Corrales uses his keyboard? Like he's like a he's super strange. He also presses shift with his thumb, but like his whole hand is like skewed towards the edge like the middle of the keyboard. I don't even oh know. Like he's rebinded all the keys and it's all in the middle. <laughs> so yeah, you, you, you're like you have to this. speak to him I, about I, what he's doing. I need a picture of, of how that works. <laughs> So, Mumbo, you mentioned, uh, you know, obviously you're, you're pretty big on YouTube. I think you're approaching 10 million. Uh, could get there. I'm getting there. Yeah. Right. Um, so that's exciting. Yeah, but we'll see. Yeah. How, how did this all start for you? I mean, how did you how did you become a YouTuber? When did you decide to post your first video? What was your whole idea behind uh, putting content on, on YouTube in the first place? Um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess like the full long story is uh i i spent a lot of my childhood like bmxing uh, i used to love uh bmxing and i was always super interested in in the video side of of bmxing uh, for anyone who's ever been in any of those communities be it like bmxing surfing skateboarding uh really any extreme sports there's like a lot of uh weight put on what are called edits so it would be films that that companies put out of their team riders um doing the most incredible tricks like the, the the latest sort of generation of new tricks be it on street or you know on on trails or anything like that um and i was like fascinated by the process of creating an edit um to a point where like i would visualize my own bmx edits all the time i would like have them playing in my head like i would do this trick here and then that would transition into this trick and this mm. is the song that i'd have um and this was when i was probably about 11 or 12 years old wow. so quite young um and then i kind of got myself a paper round uh saved up a bunch of money got myself a video camera i saved up and bought myself a computer that i would be able to edit videos on and basically made like three or four videos of my friends before I had grown too tall to really BMX at all. And I just completely like fell out of love with BMXing. Oh, no. um, so I was kind of like, I was a little bit lost. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do because for me, the creation of videos was so tied to BMXing that I almost completely f fell out of love with the idea of making any videos. And then mm. I actually just stumbled upon people making Call of Duty montages, believe it or not. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm not too tall to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, just, I just started making Call of Duty montages. It originally, it was it was uh, clips that I had got myself. I was quite good at I was quite good at Call of Duty at the time. Um, and then it went on to me making edits for for other good players and like edit entering editing competitions and things like that. Um, and then eventually, I kind of got bored of playing Call of Duty and there was this other game called Minecraft that had come along that seemed pretty interesting and I don't know what happened in my sort of like 15 or 16 year old no I would I would have been 15 15 year old brain that thought that was like a normal transition to make but I just went from making Call of Duty editing montages just to making a Minecraft videos wow. um and I just I, I just started making them um and at the time, they weren't even about anything specific. Like a lot of it was me just playing with my friend um, and then discovered this thing called Redstone. And I genuinely thought I'm just going to learn as I go. So some of my first Redstone videos are me genuinely learning how Redstone works. Um, and it, it just continued from there. Wow. Are those are those still up on your channel or have, at this point? Have you hidden those away? I think some of them some of them are unlisted. I had okay. some slightly different choice of words <laughs> back, in, back then no, about yeah, how yeah. I was doing my, my redstone <laughs> things. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that, there's definitely, I think I've left a few of them up and I've referenced them in other videos. Okay. They, they are available to see online. Um, but yeah, they're there. I mean, it's, it's again, I think I had the, the, the joy of being so young that I kind of, 
I didn't see how much of a big deal it was to actually like start putting something out online. I think I literally just kind of joined, I joined, I joined YouTube and just started chucking things up because yeah. that seemed like the place to put it. And <laughs> I didn't really have any foresight or any idea that it could go grow it or do anything, to be honest with you. So a lot of times uh, when we have guests on that have like screen names and aliases and stuff, one of the biggest mm -hmm. questions is we get, how did you come up with that name? How did Mumbo Jumbo come about? Yeah, I mean, so I, I say I I was playing with my friend. My friend actually came up with the name Mumbo Jumbo. Like that is not, hmm. was not me. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're um, the one so, with it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, no. So, so we were just sat there and we were trying to think of ideas for what this this YouTube channel should be called. I was coming from like the Call of Duty area where everyone had really cool sort of like studio. You'd always have like studios in your name, or you'd have something that made you seem like a really big deal. Uh -huh. So I wanted to be called something like crafted like it's not crafted studios but something along those lines like something that sounded like really professional uh -huh. and then my friend said oh you could just be called like mumbo jumbo <laughs> I, I, I kind of stopped in my tracks and i was like that's that's actually got a good ring to it like that's such a good name and we just we chose it there and then and and we wow. went from there that's a cool and now it's yeah. like one of the biggest names that there is that is too cool i know uh, that is too yeah. cool. So no, none of the other names would have been good. Yeah, <laughs> none of them. <laughs> so I don't know what your position on this is going to be, but if you were to go back and look mm -hmm. at your earlier videos and everything, I I think about the way that you make your videos and, and the cadence of it uh, of the editing, the cadence more specifically of your voice, and you have mm -hmm. a very very solid stellar uh, delivery and energy, and your you, with your voice. Do you, did you find your YouTube voice right out of the gate, or did it have to evolve over time? Uh, that, that's a really good question. I think it. It definitely, if you go back and look at my old videos, I think I went through phases of almost imitating people. So like some of my early videos, I was watching tons of Etho. So I kind of started the videos of like, hello, everybody, <laughs> this is Mumpo. Yeah. You know, it was all very much in that cadence of Etho. And then I probably went through a few YouTubers before I went back to my own baseline. Mm -hmm. And I think that happens with any sort of art project. Whenever you, you take something up, you will first imitate and you will you will find things that you like about what other people are doing yeah. and sometimes you will almost beeline too far that way mm -hmm. and you'll start actually imitating them too much and then eventually you find your way back to your own personal baseline and you'll keep little little slices of what they have and maybe there'll be like little bits of essence that you that you bring with you but for me uh yeah, my early days are definitely more more imitating others to a certain extent, and then I came back to my own baseline. And then from there, I think more so it's my editing that is kind of caught up with my cadence mm. in a way. So I I now, when I'm editing my videos, I, I try and lean into that flow, and I'll keep clips running onto one another um, in the edit. So I'll make sure that things flow but then also I'll make use of the ability to stop that flow for comedic effect or to bring attention to a point. So like I'll have a lot of clips that run into one another, knowing full well that I can then stop that and break it for it to come across funnier or to draw attention to a moment that I want to draw attention to. And I think that's something that's really come in in the past couple of years. And I think in the past year or so, it's also adding music into the mix as well that matches that that moment. And I think all of those things have gradually come in over time um That's but it's been a slow process you know yeah. i've been doing this for uh 11 years so it kind of it happens over time yeah. do you do you find yourself editing while you're filming and what i mean by that is a lot of the times when i'm like making an episode or whatever as i'm speaking as i'm doing it i know how i want it to turn out and i find myself sort of uh, manipulating what i'm recording because i already know how i'm going to end up editing this like i can see it before i sit down to actually edit Totally. Um, so I record in clips. I'm a bit of a strange person like that. I like to have it uh, set up so that I know exactly what I have. Um, so I'll, when I think of something to say, I, I naturally just go to hit F10 and that's my record button and I'll immediately start talking and then I'll cut. And then that also allows me to look back at the footage that I have quickly in my file folder and just hit the space bar to preview it and then just press the up key to go through the clips to see 
if they are flowing in in the right way. Not that I ever go back and and remove any of the clips or change it. I just want to make sure that that actually worked as a moment. Yeah. Um, mm. And that that so I I almost literally edit as I go in that I will remove clips and remove things that I don't think are are interesting and then when it comes to actually editing my videos I'll just dump the 200 or so clips into the timeline and then just cut out all the dead space and then that is my episode basically mm -hmm. uh, outside of obviously recording with others then it's then it's longer that has yeah, to be chopped down different, but yeah different my story, own stuff yeah yeah, of course. Yeah. I think the hardest that would be really difficult. Yeah, <laughs> recording in clips with other people. Yeah. <laughs> it's scripted basically at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know for me, when I first started making YouTube videos, my like at, it, when I edited the way you were talking about, I never got a good feel for exactly how long it was until I threw everything in the mm -hmm. timeline. And I'm like, oh, whoops! I recorded you know 45 minutes worth of of footage right. here, and I really was aiming for 20 to to 25. Is that something that that you kind of saw too on your earlier uh, stages of doing YouTube or, or were you pretty much like aware of, of where you're at the entire time? I think so. The problem that I, I sometimes run into is that where I record in such short clips, I think sometimes I'll look in my folder and I'll be like, there's a 200 clips in there. Like, this is fine. And then <laughs> I'll drop it into the timeline. And it'll be like 12 minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so that that can sometimes <laughs> throw me off almost in the opposite direction to what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. But equally, I think now I've got a really good idea for where I'm at in an episode. And I know what sort of phase I'm in in the episode as well. Because I, I do also think it's quite intense if... If I have an episode that is made up of those, so for example, if I do drop my 200 clips into the timeline and it's 11 minutes, that's a really good sign to me that I actually need something in the episode mm. that is going to sit for a little while longer because it's so intense to watch a video that has a cut that often. Yeah. Um, so you almost, I, I need something that will break up the flow a little bit and it will it will bring the pace down potentially. Um, so it's it's also a good I it's a good way for me to see what the flow of an episode is going to be like and it informs the way that I will record going forwards if I end up in a situation where I'm stuck at all. Mm -hmm. If that makes any sense yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of no, course. No, no, I understand I understand that feeling. Like sometimes it's 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 exactly that. And you know, I'll film, film, film and I'm like, okay, I'm good. Let mm -hmm. me get going. I'm but that I have four minutes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, yeah. I do what you do. I, I record in clips, and I and I do. Mm -hmm. I, I like what you just said. I might talk to you later about that offline the, with the, your hotkeys mm -hmm. and stuff. Because what I do is I just I I record forever, but I don't speak until I know I want it to be a piece, yeah. and then I can see the the sound waves, and that's where I go find those. But I like your way of a course. lot better, yeah. But um, yeah. <clears throat> so, well, that that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. It's basically the same, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I got a, I got a question here for you. I, I want to start diving into the, the fame of Mumbo, right? And I, we can go back and forth between <laughs> Minecraft and all that, but this is a fun topic and cause we have to keep in mm -hmm. mind my, like I, it, my first exposure to you, um, on a, on, I guess on a really elevated level was actually when I, when I met you in 2016 at the Minecon house and mm -hmm. we had a lot of fun and it was great getting to know you. I mean, I knew who you were before that, but that was my first like time, you know, really getting to know you and getting to meet you. And I remember, um, being, pretty shocked at, at how, what a following you had a quite li like literally wherever you went, there was a tale of hundreds of people follow. <laughs> it was, it was a lot of fun to watch. And this question is, you know, <laughs> what is it like for you to have so many people idolize you uh, for your talent? Right. Uh, like, do you, is this something to where this is, so, you, you've just sort of settled into it. Cause that was something else that you had was uh, a lot of humility about it too. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about a, a specific, part of what I'm talking about, but I want to get more into your position. I think you're very, very well aware uh, that you are huge and, and that you have a huge following and people do legitimately idolize you, but you've just, you've stayed so humble through that. Take me through that journey of being just a normal Ollie and then being the celebrity and just like, what, what was that transition <laughs> for you? And if I may, and I just honestly, at a, at a pretty young age, and that's, that's the story I'm going to get into in a second here, but tell me about your journey there. Yeah. Uh, I I honestly don't know if it's helped it happening as such like a young formative age for me um, because I kind of don't know any different, I guess. Like I, this is my one life, so mm. I haven't had any other experiences outside of knowing that I do have an audience. Um, 
I, I mean, the, the reality is, like, on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't really think about it. Uh, and I try not to think about it, it, not from a perspective of it makes me uncomfortable. It's just if I go through life thinking of myself as this big person with tons of fans and people idolizing me, that just seems like a really uncomfortable and odd way to exist. So I just go through life um, as a regular person, and anyone that comes up to me who knows who I am, sure, there will be potentially some awkwardness to the interaction because you're very familiar with who I am and I am completely unfamiliar with who you are. But at the end of the day, I'm going to try and connect with you on like a human level because that is, <laughs> that's what I am. Like, I'm just a person. I, I may have made a bunch of Minecraft videos that are popular and I may have done some things that, that people have watched and potentially been inspired by and maybe even made life-changing decisions based on like you know going into engineering school because of watching my redstone videos or taking up filmmaking because they've seen my film stuff um and that's that's beautiful and i i love meeting people who say that sort of thing and that makes me feel really good about what my impact on the internet has been um but i don't i try not to sit with it too much because i think that would be a, a, a strange way to exist. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I think it would be a difficult. <laughs> I think it would be a difficult way to live. And I think. I think the reality is, like, I I absolutely love hearing from the people who come up to me and, and meet me in the street. I love hearing what their stories are. I just I find I find humans super interesting. And and if I can connect with people in any way, like that's meaningful to me. And um, I would say you probably got like a heightened version of that because we were at Minecon. It's not every day that I have hundreds of people. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. My door it needs security yeah. guards and yeah. yeah. <laughs> that whole bit. No, it's and that so that so here's this and I'm excited to be able to like face to face right now. I mean kind of face to face, but with good face -face good technology. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm excited mm -hmm. to tell you the story I'm about to tell you because I I've 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 mm -hmm. said it before on stream. I think I, I don't even know, maybe I've talked about it in a podcast. I don't know, but People often ask me about my experience at MineCon, you know, 2016 mm -hmm. MineCon. It was, obviously, we've talked about this a billion times, how much fun it was. Mm -hmm. And I like to tell the story about you because you were, you were the most recognizable at, uh, uh, inside the house. You were the most, probably the most recognizable at, uh, at the convention possibly, right? And I tell this story because you did something that I found to be very, very impressive. And I'm very excited to, to, Tell you this right now face to face i'm i'm i love i love this i've been wanting to, i've been wanting this moment since 2016 <laughs> so you were you were you were a pretty young kid at the time in my opinion i'm an old guy right and at the time i believe you were yeah. 20 or 21 i can't quite remember i think i was 19 i might not have even been in my 20s oh potentially wow. 2016 oh no 20 i would have been 20 yeah so you wow. were 20. I would have been 20 yeah yeah yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. all of yeah, 20 years math, old yeah. all of 20 years old and you carried yourself um, with the humility of somebody who's well into their fifties. And, and what I'm talking about is you had this line of people who wanted your autograph. Now let's talk about what it was that I, I was, you, you were doing autographs in pulse. I was doing autographs, right. Mm -hmm. You know, you had a line, I had a smaller line. I, and it was, it was a lot of fun doing autographs. Mumble's line was about a quarter mile long and it was in, there was like, there was, <laughs> it, it would cause problems. Yeah. It was They're like the security guards would come up and be like, you guys got it. <laughs> this <laughs> line is blocking traffic. Can we do something right. about this? And we're like, right. I can't help it. There's yeah. all these people on his autograph. Yeah. And it was, and it was just a ton of people and you were there for hours at one point, I believe. And when I would do an autograph, I would just, I would do the name Skizzle Man. That's what I do on whatever mm -hmm. stuff they wanted me to write on, whether it was their arm or the, the little sword or whatever it was. There's my name. Then I watched Mumbo and his line, his never ending line that never got smaller until we capped <laughs> it off. And most of them were, um, you had a lot of kids in the line, right? You were, your, your demographic mm -hmm. was the younger, you're like, what are you, six, five? You're a very tall guy, <laughs> I believe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you got down at their level. And from when they were like little kids, you'd get down on a knee and you would greet every single one of them, Mumbo, every one of them. You would learn their name and you would incorporate their name in some sort of message in the autograph you were leaving them. And I remember being like, God, this is, um, I do, I would not have the patience for that. Like, and I would be so, so afraid that I'd have to get the spelling of their name 50 times, you know, oh, I, I did. I, yeah. did, yeah, you, but, but you did. I mean, I spelled my yeah, own name that. wrong and I was just watching <laughs> this. And after like two hours and enough is enough, if you will, like we stood at the back of the line and we capped it off. And I remember being like, okay, he's been doing this for two hours. And I studied your energy for, with the very last person and compared it to the person from two hours ago. 
and it was the same energy. It was nothing but top shelf, mm -hmm. unbelievable energy. And I was like, yeah, this, this dude is different. He's very different. He's, <laughs> and that's that I'm just, I'm so impressed with who you are. Not with, not honestly, not with Mambo. That in that moment, I was so impressed with who, <laughs> what the person that you are, and you were twenty. Like, like you had no business having that kind of insight on what it is to be a human at twenty. I can't even begin to articulate what an a hole I was at twenty. You know what I mean? So, like, to see this was just like, whoa! This yeah. this dude is something special, man. It was cool. Uh, I, I massively appreciate that. I mean, that might have been why my line was so long. It was all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> the same number of people as you guys. I was just taking, <laughs> taking no. 10 times as long. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but no, I mean, look, I, again, it's, I, I think there's there's something to connecting with people on a human level. Like, that's important. And also, understanding that I, I'm... It, it, I, I don't want it to sound big-headed, but it, it, it's it's understanding that each and every person in that line, like I have a line of a lot of people, so I'm meeting a ton of people. Uh, and on the energy front, as much as it's a line, loads of people, um, and for me, those interactions are happening a lot. For each person in that queue, like they're going to remember my energy to them specifically. They're not going to remember the whole line. Mm -hmm. They're not going to remember what I was like with the person four people ahead of them or 100 people ahead of them. Like for them, it matters what I'm like to them. And for me, I just try and even if I'm just interacting with them for like 20, 30 seconds, it's kind of like ask them what their name is, like how they are, like where have you come from? What are you interested in? Like outside of Minecraft, like is there common ground there? Like if there's not, that's cool. Like that's still super interesting what you're into and just have a brief chat before moving on because I understand as well with a line <laughs> as long as the one that I had, like people have been waiting out in the California sun <laughs> for a decent number of hours to meet me and I felt it was... I, I owed them the time, um, which, yeah, I mean, if I wasn't like that, I guess they would have been waiting for less time, but it, it meant a lot to me that I would actually chat to them and just try and connect to them. Because, yeah. again, I think humans are super interesting. I love humans. I love knowing what people are up to and and what makes them tick. And and that was a great opportunity to just meet tons of people and chat to tons of people. Um, yeah, which is amazing. odd because I'm actually quite an introverted person myself. So <laughs> it's like the most extroverted thing that I could possibly do. But for some reason, it seemed to be OK in that, in that scenario. Yeah, I, I, um, I got to agree with because yeah. like to, to see a, a 20 year old have that kind of perspective and understand uh, how much it meant to every single individual in the line and then give them as, as much energy as you did, as much uh, attentiveness as you did. It, it was super impressive to see. So like, I knew right away from that experience, like he's got a good head on his shoulders, which was obvious, obviously, <laughs> because, you know, you you can see that with the success you've had as well. Um, now, I want to get into something that's that's uh, sometimes a difficult conversation for content creators to have with family members. And mm -hmm. how did it go down with your family when you told them mm. you want to pursue a career in youtube <laughs> okay so there's kind of like there's two phases to this one um so the only person that i really need to to kind of i've got a very small family it's just me and my mum. so there's just there's one person in my family that i kind of need to convince on um albeit that does mean it's either a hundred percent positive <laughs> or negative uh -huh. <laughs> there's no there's no yeah. kind of like <laughs> splitting of it um but the the cool thing uh, about my mum is that uh, she was working in, in newspapers at the time uh, and they had made the move online. And so she had like a good understanding of metrics. So um, I kind of told her when when I had 30,000 subscribers about my YouTube channel, I'd managed to keep it completely secret up until that point, which is quite impressive given that I was living with, <laughs> with my mum. But I would just record when she was out. And then I kind of told her about it. And at first, she didn't she didn't fully understand. She just didn't get it. Um, she didn't understand people watching other people play video games. I'm sure we've all had this yep. this discussion. Oh, yeah. um, but then we started kind of going into the numbers, and she saw that my YouTube channel was maybe getting, I think, somewhere in the region of 300 or 400,000 views per month or something like that. And she was like, that's seven times our website that we have like an entire floor of people uh, <laughs> servicing <laughs> you know yeah. wow. uh, so then she quickly kind of understood that there's clearly something about this um and she at least she could understand the metric side because even if she didn't understand the the gaming side 
she could understand the metric side. So that was almost like the foot in the door. And then she started watching some of the content and she was like, no, it's not for me, but I can understand. There's like story. This makes sense. This is entertaining, regardless of if I play Minecraft or not. It does actually make sense. And then when I got into explaining, I show, I got into explaining to her that I show people how to build certain things. Um, that obviously makes sense. It's like tutorials. It's very, it's, it's very obvious in the way that it, it serves a purpose. And she was totally on board. Uh, there was like a brief conversation when I said that I was not going to be doing my computer science course at university to do uh. <laughs> uh, YouTube. Um, I think that was maybe a slightly bigger life decision. Um, but at the time, I think I was getting towards, I mean, that would have been just before uh, Anaheim. So that probably would have been around about 2016. So that year I was going to be going to university. Um, wow. and I sent them an email like four days before just saying, Hey, like that spot isn't going to be taken. Like I'm not going to do it. Um, mm. because this YouTube thing is doing really well. And realistically, I'd left that decision way too late. I knew in my mind that I wasn't going to university, but I wanted to keep it open to me just in case. And then, I mean, as you saw at Anaheim, like all the, all the, all the signs were pointing in the direction that it was a, a good decision to go full-time on YouTube. So I just, I did. Just wow. The trigger. That's incredible. Yeah, it's it's not easy to make yeah. those decisions. I think um, you no. initially had at least taken a gap year, so you kind of experienced what it was yes. like to yeah. be out of school exactly. and, and work full time on nothing mm -hmm. but but YouTube, right? So you kind of, yeah. you, yeah. you had a good year of understanding what that felt like before you actually had to make yeah. the decision of whether or not you go back to college, right, or university. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. You done done your research. You know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly that. I <laughs> I I'd, I'd stopped. What's called sixth form college in the UK. I'd stopped that, and then yeah, had the full year of doing full time YouTube, and all the signs were pointing in the right direction that it was just a, a positive decision to make. So yeah. I'd com commit fully. I actually kind of um, followed yeah. your lead on that. I I saw you. I saw that that's what you had done, and and I thought I should try that myself. You know, working a full time job. It was getting to the point to where I needed to decide: do I do I jump ship and, and quit this full-time comfortable, you know, job that I know I could keep for years to come? Or do I try to put all my mm -hmm. eggs in the YouTube basket? And uh, mm -hmm. we were allowed to take what's called a sabbatical. So basically two months paid off of work. And a lot of people will mm -hmm. use that time to like recharge their batteries, right? Like go on vacations and, and, and kind of do nothing and that kind of stuff or take care of whatever yeah. stuff around the house. I decided to do nothing but work on YouTube as if it was my full-time <laughs> job. Because I yeah. wanted to, I wanted to feel it. I wanted to know, like, is is this something that if I did nothing but this, I can like be better at, make more content, mm -hmm. and, and enjoy. And that was the important part. Like, am I going to enjoy doing this all day, every day, nothing but this? Mm -hmm. And uh, after that two months, I knew my I knew my answer. Like, uh, like I knew I did not want to go back to a cubicle in in that job that I had before. And so I, I pulled the trigger. So. Yeah, I kind of like saw that work for you, and I was like, I, I'm gonna get a little <laughs> a little taste of that myself. <laughs> so, yeah, and it worked yeah, out. Yeah, it's a good move. Is it, it? I mean, yeah, and it's it's done nothing but good things for you. So, um, yeah, just sometimes, yeah, if if you can be offered that 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 slight, it's like a little nudge. It's it's <laughs> yeah. almost a, a, a taste. It it can be so helpful in informing the decision. Um, and yeah, that was super super important to me. Yeah, that's good. So here's a here's a question. Um. This is kind of a weird one, but oh, my mic's falling. Uh, <laughs> if uh, did you have an aha moment with um, with oh. with Minecraft? And and I'm I'm asking this because I can I know what mine was. So uh, the, the first time I sat down to play Minecraft, I'll be honest with you, I was like, "What is this crap game I'm looking at?" <laughs> and I just started to play, and then it started to become more interesting. But my aha moment was quite literally not not Redstone. It, it was Redstone, but it wasn't the fact that redstone existed, it was when I saw that a uh, power that powered redstone could turn off pre-powered redstone. Like, and that's when I was like, Oh, this, this is computer language. People are going to make computers mm. in this game. That's when I was like, this mm. game is way deep. Did you have yourself a moment where you're like, well, this game's got some serious legs. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I can't not make a joke about my aha <laughs> moment being with, <laughs> with Martin and impulse. I feel like that. <laughs> <laughs> Very oh, good. Yeah, I guess I set that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but outside of outside of the many aha moments that I've had in my time, um, I would say, yeah, I mean, it's, it was with Redstone. I think it's almost it's almost captured in 4K on my channel to a certain extent. You can see in the early videos where I have I have no idea how Redstone works, but I'm immediately 
going into making redstone tutorials with the sort of confidence that only a 16 year old could have <laughs> um, like so i immediately was 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 learning as i go and then telling people what i had learned which is kind of strange but but that was a big moment for me where i realized there's more to this game than maybe originally met the eye for me uh, i originally saw it as almost the way that the yorks cast play the game don't, don't get me wrong they dabbled in in redstone and stuff like that but a lot of theirs was almost more adventury and like mm. let's build a house let's go on an adventure um whereas for me discovering that there was like a technical side to it was a, a big a big eye opener to me and the idea that i could then use problem solving skills and 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 almost like solving puzzles um yeah that got me super excited and and that was really my aha moment where i realized this is what i want to make videos on um yeah it's, cra it's crazy it's crazy it, it just kind of it, yeah it's it's crazy how, how minecraft really is for everybody that's what yeah. when, whenever i try to explain mm. minecraft to people who don't know what it is or they they've seen it in passing they ask me well you know what is this game and i'm and i tell them i'm like well i don't want to sound too biased but it's the greatest game that's ever been made <laughs> and I, and but i but i expand on that because i'm like because it's for everybody mm -hmm. you have the adventurers they just want to go out and, and explore the lands and they want to get down to the caves and they want to find you know they want to go mining you have the painters who want to create this amazing art you have the the mm -hmm. uh, tech people who want to do the machines and you have the uh, mm -hmm. i'm a experienced person i like to create experiences in the game you know and stuff mm -hmm. like that so mm -hmm. it's like it's just it is the it's the most incredible game that's ever existed it's not there's no mystery as to why it's been so huge for so long and hopefully yeah. hopefully stays that way yeah, it's a it's like a platform for creativity. Yeah. It's it is what you make of it, yeah. and and it is just creativity without any need for for monetary resources. Like the game costs a certain amount, and then from there you don't have to put any more money in. It is a completely free platform for whatever creative expression that you you want yeah. to have and create. Speaking of being creative, I've I've always kind of been in awe about. How what seems like a fountain of unique ideas come out <laughs> of uh, the things that hit your channel. Uh, how do how do you come up with so many ideas, especially after what you said, eleven years of doing this? Uh, it, it still just baffles me when I see you post something on your channel that I'm like, how did he think of making a a moving <laughs> tank in Minecraft? You know what I mean? Like you just have like idea <laughs> after idea after idea. Uh, is that easy for you? Do these ideas just come come to you naturally, or do you like really have to sit down and try to come up with things? So I definitely it's definitely a conscious effort. So sometimes, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you'll just be walking through life, and then suddenly an idea will hit you, and often I'll just text it to my girlfriend. That is how <laughs> she'll just get like working tank <laughs> through on text messages. <laughs> um, but otherwise, no, it's a, it's a conscious effort. So I have I have like a, a notebook. So it's kind of you know, so it's like here, and there's there's tons of them. Wow, all kind of dotted around my office from many years of making YouTube videos. I have basically all of my old notebooks going right the way back to, I would say probably around 2014. Um, and I will just sit there and I'll kind of just put numbers down, down the, the left hand side up to say eight or nine or 10. And then I will almost sit there in, in, in like a semi meditative state. It probably <laughs> looks very strange from a, from a, another person's perspective, but I'll sit there and I'll kind of close my eyes and I'll envision myself traveling through a Minecraft world, and then I'll be drawn to certain things. So be it, I don't know, like at the ocean, and then I'll be like, okay, well, like what could I do with ocean? And then in my mind, I'll go down into the ocean. Then it's like, ah, oh, maybe I could, you know, make a an underwater vault, or maybe I could make a submarine, or maybe I could make uh, an underwater vault with a submarine inside it. <laughs> the, the, the submarine comes out of the vault. That seems interesting. Maybe if there was some security involved, then there could be like security above ground, then there could be like an airlock, and you'd have to solve some combinations, then swim down, go through the airlock, and then a submarine will come out. I mean, that's like that's a video that doesn't exist. That is an idea that is just like I'll run things through my head mm. and play with it and envision it and then see how it would work as a creative video and see what parts of that video kind of work in chunks and what would be entertaining to watch as a viewer. Um, and and that that's how I do it. And then I'll, I'll note that down and I'll do that. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't normally come out that fast. Like there'll, there'll be times where it's quite slow mm -hmm. and I'll put on some, some music or something that can get my brain going. Um, but I'll gradually like note down those ideas 
normally I'll I'll cross out five of them, leave three of them. Those three ideas will probably sit there for like two or three weeks, and then I'll I'll I will have had other ideas in the notebook that I'll work on. Then I'll come back to them, and then eventually, um, they'll get made. So you uh, kind of let them stew for a while, just in case you, it was one of those yeah. things. Was like, oh, it sounded good at the time, and then yeah. you start to get into it, uh, and you find out it's not. I mean, have you had that? Have you had that where you? Like started yeah. getting into these projects, you're like halfway into it. Maybe you've sunk in a bunch of time into it, and then have, realized yeah. this is just not going to work as a video. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've had I've had things that they're just not entertaining. Maybe the end product is just disappointing. Um, maybe it doesn't actually work. It's not physically possible. I have I've overlooked some game mechanic in Minecraft that I hadn't thought of that is making it completely impossible or just not possible for someone of my brain power. <laughs> um, and and yeah, so uh, there, there's there's a lot of videos that that don't end up getting to the to the cutting room, basically. Yeah. J journey back in your mind if you can. Let's talk about a hundred doors. Those those, those <laughs> okay. videos yeah, are yeah. just too, they're yeah. too much fun. They're too much fun <laughs> to watch. Fun. <laughs> and I'm thinking like like th this cat literally took the idea of a door and just did it a hundred different ways. And that video was so much fun. How did you make it so yeah. much fun? What inspired that? Uh, so that's that. I mean, I, I literally have. Hang on, I've got so this this book here, which is YouTube book number one. Wow, uh, wow. is the one that you're gonna have to auction that off someday. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I that, so it's, it's inspired by some of the stuff that that Crafted Movie used to do, which is an old early Minecraft channel. Which, funnily enough, weird small world moment that Green used to work on. Oh um, wow, which is a really odd kind of wow. coalition of worlds, I guess. Um, and yeah, I was just sat there. Again, I, I was kind of running through things in my head and I, I get inspired by certain things and you'll see certain waves on my channel. Like right now I'm I'm in a wave of just really enjoying slime block flying machines and I find them curious. So I'll naturally go towards that sort of content. And I think early Redstone definitely skewed towards doors because they're, they're some of the, they're some of the, they're one of the things that players are going to have to interact with at some point in the game. Yeah. So building an impressive door is something that someone has a frame of reference for. Um, hmm. And and at the time, I, I I had a bunch of doors that I'd designed, and I thought, well, it could be fun to just put them in the line, put them to some music, and then kind of match up the rhythm a little bit and make it so it's quite a satisfying to watch video. And then and then <laughs> that's it. See, that's as far as I thought. And that's that's where <laughs> that's what I admire about it so much is that that's an idea that I would have. Let's just pretend that you didn't make that. And once upon a time, I was mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't make a video. And if my brain was like, you know, how about 100 doors in a row? My brain instantly mm. would have been like, no, that's stupid. <laughs> but but you went, but you did it and it's awesome. I so I'd have been like, dang it, like it, like it's that, that that it was kind of frustrating because I'm like I don't like the fact that I would have I would have likely dismissed that way yeah. too fast and it's a really good yeah. idea. <laughs> and there's probably loads of ideas in my book that I dismiss. I mean, but I think sometimes like full commitment to a stupid idea comes out with some of the best videos. Yeah, and that's very what good. I wholeheartedly believe. That's a t-shirt like, right you... there. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's like, if you half commit to a stupid idea, then it's bad. It's not, yeah. it's the whole thing's rubbish. Yeah. Whereas if you fully commit to a stupid idea, um, then, then it ends up being good. Like my tank <laughs> and like, even some of the YouTube shorts that I do, like the YouTube shorts ideas that I come up with are like the stupidest ideas in the world, but I will commit to them wholeheartedly <laughs> and then they end up, people in, end up enjoying them wow. <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> What's the favorite short that you've done of yours? Like what is I'm your probably, favorite so far? So I, I just recently made one. I think I posted it maybe yesterday. Um, and like the whole point is, I mean, it's a lot of my part, a lot of my shorts kind of blast other people's YouTube shorts, which is <laughs> <laughs> seems to be a, a genre that I seem to have gone into. But like the, the short starts off with uh, the footage like swipes away as if someone has swiped to the next short and I place a block of obsidian and then use a piston to like push the short back down. And I'm like, hey, where are you going? Like, nice. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. <laughs> and oh. I, I just think that's like a super stupid idea and super fun. And then and then I start to, I'm, I'm like, okay, well, what were you about to watch? Then I hop on a flying machine and like go down through their feed of just other, the, the sort of live YouTube shorts, which are <laughs> not really live and slightly awkward to watch. And I kind of go past those and... <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. No, it's really yeah. stupid. It's a super stupid idea. It's so stupid. But I think 
given that I fully committed to it and like the editing is actually quite good on it and and it all flows quite nicely it ends up being <laughs> ends up being enjoyable it ends up being fun oh, I, I gotta see that one yeah. that sounds amazing it's remarkable yeah. how critical <laughs> editing is mm -hmm. it's like it's yeah. it's amazing how it's not just the last step in the process it's it's no. maybe the, maybe the most important step of the entire process yeah how much do you put into there. um not just editing but like when you're designing an episode let's say of, of hermitcraft do you typically mm -hmm. just like have a couple ideas and you start recording or do you like envision the title thumbnail like first and then work your way towards that like what order do you go in because i've heard creators say they go both ways like they'll kind of outline on a piece of paper what they want to do in the episode and then later come up with the title thumbnail based on what happened or in the opposite order of like basically seeing it first and then building it so i am i have two processes so something like the the giant working tank that i did like that was just a thumbnail like that in terms of when that came like when that idea came into my head i was just like that is just going to be the most epic looking thumbnail in the world it's just a giant tank it will look really impressive and i envisioned that uh, and then it was also just a fun project to work on so i went down that route that's incredibly important to me with hermitcraft i think it's a little bit it's a little bit less uh thumbnail orientated i don't often think about the thumbnail unless Unless I actually think it could be a problem. Like, for example, there was a big question mark in my head how I was going to do the thumbnail of me covering Doc's perimeter. Because mm -hmm. it's like, in theory, it should just look like regular Minecraft terrain. <laughs> how do I show yeah. that as a thumbnail? <laughs> That's So it only kind of comes to my head if I think it's going to be a problem. Otherwise, the, the thumbnail and things is kind of done after the fact. Mm. Um, and it helps that a lot of my builds... I, I don't know if this is a kind of chicken and egg situation. I don't know if I've subconsciously built in a way that is clear for thumbnails because mm -hmm. <laughs> that's beneficial for YouTube or if the thumbnails come out of my building style. I, I have no clue. Mm -hmm. um, but but they, they tend to come quite naturally. And in terms of structuring a Hermitcraft episode, again, I, I'll, I'll generally have some ideas of what I'd like to achieve build-wise and then I'll hope for interactions. So the way that I will tend to structure a Hermitcraft episode is it comes back to flow. Like the, the important thing for me is flow and the feeling of a rhythm in an episode. And I, I, I want to get things started maybe on a, on a fast pace and kind of rattle through some progress on a build and then hopefully break things up with a little bit of an interaction, a little bit of fun with another person and then go through a little bit more building, maybe have like a, a silly solo moment, something that I'm doing on my own that is maybe a little bit goofier away from the project, maybe have a few more interactions and then wrap up the project. That would be my dream Hermitcraft episode. That doesn't mean that that happens every time. And I almost don't want that to happen every time because that means that I'd almost have to script it and get things worked out. Mm -hmm. um, but if it organically falls into place like that, then I'm very happy and I, I feel like that's a solid episode. Um, and then when it comes to the editing, again, it's just looking for the the flow, making sure that that the stuff that I'm doing on my own uh, is is nice and and quick and has all the beats that I want to hit, and then any interactions that I have with other people, I give it enough. I mean, it's it's tricky because YouTube editing is a bit strange in that we are very good at cutting out dead space and cutting out almost like air gaps, but sometimes an interaction is made a thousand times funnier by letting things breathe yeah. and is making sure that I actually let myself click out of that super fast yeah. YouTube cut mentality mm -hmm. and actually allow interactions to breathe and allow funny bits of context to sit in, in the interaction. Um, so they take a slightly different mindset. And, and that's something that I think over the past year, I've been working quite hard to preserve because in, in previous years, I've, I've looked at it very much on like a, almost to a waveform level. It's like, oh, there's a gap there. Like, I'll, I'll chop that out. That's dead space. When actually that could be the funniness of the joke. Yes, like the absolutely. waiting for everyone to respond. You know? Yes, <laughs> dude. Yes. That See, that's that's art. That's artistry right there. And there's there's a, a, yeah. a, a kind of a weird phrase used in, in music. And, you know, because Impulse and I, you know, we, we're drummers. We've been involved in music mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. And some some of the more complicated music, one of the phrases that you say is you listen to the notes that they're not playing. And there's a running joke yeah. like, oh, I can do that at home. But but when you listen to what they're not playing, it's it's very it's it's deliberately uh, it's, it's a deliberate deficiency in the music that is adding mm -hmm. to the overall mm -hmm. art. And it takes an elevated level yeah. of comprehension to do that as well as it does yeah. to sense it. And what makes this world interesting 
is it doesn't take uh, an elevated um, comprehension to understand it in our world with the with the editing and stuff. You just know you liked it. You right. might not know why. Mm. You just know that you liked yeah. it. And those those gaps are yeah. they're they're big. They're, they can be deliberate, but it's got to be. It's it's painting. You're painting the whole time. Mm. I think a good way to know if a <laughs> yeah. video is like edited well is if it's a 20 minute video and you put it on and next thing you know it's over and you're like wait yep. that 20 minutes went by super fast that's yep. how you know that like that person captured the flow that mom was talking about right? absolutely yeah 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 absolutely it's all rhythm it's all it's all rhythm it's all beats it's all you know you have to sometimes look at these things almost like as a a musical thing as good as a verse might be if the entire song was just the verse it's a bad song like yeah. it needs the verse it needs the chorus it needs whatever the break is called that i always forget the name of i i, I mean i'm not musical at all the, but the bridge but it's, a, it's the bridge yeah yeah and it's you it, you're right, stuff. and it's it's because it, it's a it's a journey. The whole thing's supposed to be a right. journey, mm -hmm. and a journey is not a straight line. You know what I mean? A, a, no. a journey is quite literally. It's a journey even includes stops, entire yeah. stops. You yeah. know, and so yeah, yeah, and that's what it is. This is interesting. All right, all right, all right. You got a question? <laughs> uh, this is something. So, it's kind of a, a running joke for when I stream or when I'm making videos is I always talk about what Minecraft doesn't have and what I want it to have. <laughs> the things that I have a list. That's 10 miles long of all the things that I want to be added to Minecraft. One of them is enchanted boats. I would, I'd like boats or you can enchanted boats would be cool. What if, right? You can go on lava with them or you can go over terrain yeah. for a few blocks or whatever. Like, like it would literally, literally be an enchantment called four wheeling where, you know, you're in the ice on the water <laughs> and pop up on the ice and the back yeah. in the water, stuff like that. It, what is it that Minecraft doesn't have that you're just like, when are they going to get this? It could be a mob. It could be, it could be a block. I mean, I'd say definitely. My, um, it's known as movable tile entities, which to explain that is movable chests, movable furnaces. Uh, th that's been in Bedrock for a long time. It doesn't really make sense why it's not in the game. It's entirely possible. Nembom, who is now works at Mojang, did the carpet mod, which does it incredibly successfully. I think it should be in the game. There's there's no real reason why it shouldn't, and that would <laughs> that would. It, it, that would that would just make so many things possible yeah. that aren't currently possible in the vanilla version of Minecraft, um, and it would give it parity with Bedrock Edition, which is something that definitely Mojang is looking to do, and I think that's that's a step in the right direction. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, that's like my main one. Yeah. Um, I thought for sure you I were going to say Bluestone. Yeah, Bluestone, <laughs> the old April Fool's. You want to tell the story about <laughs> Bluestone? Still people out. <laughs> I mean, I had like a running thing where I would just make up a feature for, again, this is a good example of coming up with a stupid idea and then committing to it wholeheartedly. <laughs> like, I would come up with a, I, I would just come up with a Redstone feature and on April Fool's Day, I would make a video that was surprisingly convincing that it existed in the game. <laughs> um, I do think I pushed it a little bit too far when I said that uh, entities, so like chickens, could transmit redstone signals. <laughs> I, think, I think people people saw, people saw through that one, but otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, the blue stone still to this day catches people out. Um, and also ender hoppers. Uh, I did a video where I had items running into an ender chest and then them coming out somewhere else. And yeah, still people try oh. that regularly and. <laughs> And it, it doesn't. It obviously doesn't work. Um, you get hate comments. I tried this and it didn't This is work. amazing. Yeah. This is. I don't know if you know who um, Danny Gonzalez is. Danny Gonzalez is a. a yeah, 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 of course. He yeah. he um he's he's known for duping his audience, yeah. and he's yeah. very good at it. And this is reminding yeah. me of that because he did. He's the dude who did the. Uh, he he got the world to believe. He just set like a world record for he, speed. Yeah, he was a speed runner. Speed run, yeah. He had yeah. a dude off yeah. to his off to the side, actually controlling <laughs> so the keyboard good. and mouse. Yeah. So good, so good. <laughs> <laughs> duping the audience god now see now that now i want to play in that i like that a lot that's good <laughs> he would be good at it for sure yeah yeah i should do another one of those i i should come up with something that 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 does that because i haven't I, I i think the last one was the chicken redstone one <laughs> i was gonna say have you hit one every single year like that you've been doing no, YouTube? you I, don't have like i think it's been a show a, yeah, I think I think it's been a good long time. I think I think that Bluestone video might be getting on like nine years old. You've made a very deep reference there. I think. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I keep waiting for him to put it in the game for real. That's all. Yeah. You know, keep thinking about yeah. it. So, do you play any games for fun? And what a weird question that is. But quite literally, like it, I realize, as soon as people move into this field, there's 
I, I just sort of surround. I used to love, I love games. I do love games, but it, it's got to be mm-hmm. business oriented for some reason. I don't know why, but probably because I have mm-hmm. no time, but do you, do you do anything, any other games, video games or any other kind of games for fun? Yeah. So, I mean, it's funny because as I said at the start, I kind of, I wouldn't necessarily have called myself a gamer before I got into making Minecraft videos from a wanting to create videos perspective, as opposed to enjoying yeah. Minecraft and then making videos, albeit I fell in love with the game and that is what kept it going uh, for that entire time. Obviously, I wouldn't have been able to keep going without that. Um, for games like for, for for video games for me though it's it's games like skate i still love the skate franchise so skate 3 is still so much fun to me um and then i'll play board games with with my friends uh quite a lot so i'll play that sort of thing uh i do occasionally play civ which it just eats so much time it's almost it's one of those games where you'll sit down for a round of civ and then the sun will come up and you won't know what's happened. <laughs> um, is this, are these UK thing? What are these games? I don't even recognize. So civ- civilization. So it's like civilization is, is, uh, Oh God, how do I explain that? You should, you should play it. It's a fun game. It's, um, <laughs> It's like a turn base. So, <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't like to sleep ever, yeah. here's a game for you because that's what it will do. <laughs> well, no, Civ is like a it's like a world building. I don't know how to describe it. You you start as like a tribe, and then the whole point is you're you're trying to get towards you. You start as a tribe. You're often playing with friends, often in the same room. That's the thing that makes it the most fun. Um, and then you'll have. You guys and then the NPCs, you can choose to be friends with your friends or fight them, whatever you want. But you're basically building up your little empire uh, to then create a civilization. And I can't even remember what the end goal is. I, I genuinely don't know. It's been a while since I've I've played it towards the end. Um, that does yeah, sound like fun. It, that sounds like old school almost, uh, um, uh, Warcraft. Right, that sounds like like old so. school Warcraft, where you start, you literally would start with like a, a single miner, a builder or miner, and then you yeah. got to you got to create your huts. And the same time you're doing this, yeah. you have somebody else in the same land doing the same thing. And yeah. the premise there yeah. is to build up so huge that yeah. you can actually attack them. But yeah, but, that's yeah. that's Civ. Yeah, that's the same as Civ. Mm-hmm. And then Skate Skate is just Skate is a super interesting game because it came out I don't know when uh, Skate Three is the one that I probably play the most just because it's the most modern of the franchise. But Skate 1 came out, and the whole point of it was that it was a, a skateboarding game that was like truly designed by skateboarders. So obviously you had the, the Tony Hawks and everything like that, which are amazing games, um, but they relied on button combinations, whereas the Skate games, you had to basically flick the the right joystick of your controller as you would the skateboard so oh, that, like, wow. the whole point is is that to do like a kickflip you had to go down and then flick up slightly to the right which is what you have to do with your foot on a skateboard and then that will cause you to do the kickflip so that is so satisfying playing that game and like linking a bunch of tricks together because it feels like you're that actually cool. <laughs> living like a childhood dream of of being a professional <laughs> skateboarder what? and there was like a inbuilt video editor in there so you could make your own skate edit so naturally that was like huge for me back when i was a kid oh, wow. um yeah, well, and I still have a lot of nostalgia for that. I want to see these are games yeah. I want to look into now. I really do. <laughs> I really do because I want to get back into just enjoying gaming again. Uh, so I'll tell you what. Yeah. So this is there's been a, a common theme that's been a part of all this, and that it's it, it everything that we've been talking about. There's some sort of connection to editing. There's some sort of connection to this other whole side of mumbo <laughs> that, 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 that really warrants a, a, a deep dive, which I'm, I'm very excited for. Yeah. And the reason everybody's going to be excited. This we won't talk about the cameras. We want to talk about the, the artistry of it. Um, but let's, let's wrap this one up mm-hmm. and then let's, mm-hmm. let's, if you've got time, we'd love for you to stick around and I want to talk because yeah. you got, uh, you got some goodies behind. We you. haven't even talked about what's <laughs> yeah. behind him and that whole other <laughs> yeah. side of what he does. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. We'd we love to get into, um, you know, your time with, with filmmaking and, directing mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and uh, photography and and you got other hobbies yeah. i'm sure you would love to talk about too so yeah i feel absolutely. like uh, no, i'm if happy you, to if you got the time let's uh let's split this one up and we'll make everybody wait another week to to find out more about the ollie side of mumbo the ollie we'll side it. of mumbo yeah, excellent <laughs> i love it oh this is a pleasure well thank you ever so much guys for for this episode this was so fun this is my first ever uh 
first ever podcast appearance oh we are so, wow we're <laughs> absolutely honored to have you here so thank you <laughs> wow okay don't do any more don't do any just just this ours. Is it. <laughs> yeah. but does that mean i'm not invited to part two if you just <laughs> no, you, can, you can stick around for part two but then that's, <laughs> then that's it yeah, that's where we draw the line all right well thank you so much we'll take a quick break and for everybody else uh t- tune in next week you get the rest of this one yeah. we'll see you in a bit see you later